Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides, and a lot of you have been sending me some messages. You've been asking me, what, what are your options when it comes to a two-seat convertible sports car? Well, guess what? Today, there really aren't many options. You know, you have the Mazda Miata, you have the Fiat Abarth, but you might be saying to yourself, well, Joe, those are really small. I want something with a little bit more horsepower. Well, guess what? Today, I'm at Moss Nissan in Newport Ritchie, Florida, David Moss and everybody here always rolls out the red carpet for Ready's, Ready's Rides. And what I have is a brand new 2018 Nissan 370Z convertible. And what's really wonderful about this car is, is that it's going to allow you to have that two seat fun, convertible top down, and also that power from that 3.7 liter V6. Now let me give you a little bit of history lesson about the 370Z. So the 370Z came out of the market in 2009. It was the next generation of the Nissan 350Z. Now if you're wondering, well 350Z, 370Z, is this a math problem? What's going on? Well, the 350Z, they brought that back that retro styling to hark back to that old 280Z, the 260Z, the 240Z. When they brought that back, the reason why they called it a 350Z is because it was a 3.5 liter V6. Well, guess what? In 2009, they updated the styling of the car and they updated that engine to a 3.7 liter V6. Well, guess what? With this 2019 convertible 370Z, it has some extra features that they have changed along the way. Nothing in a grandeur kind of thing, because if you look at this car, when we're going over it, you're gonna be like, Joe, it looks like a 2009. Guess what, there are gonna be a lot of similarities, and that's probably the biggest complaint about the car behind me is that Nissan has hold on to that design for a little too long. I mean, think about it, we're talking about next year's 2019, that's 10 years, well guess what? Reportedly, they're working on the next Z car for 2020. But in the meantime, we have this one. So let's check it out. I tend to like the front of the 370Z. Now, I know some people, when they went to the rounded look from the 350, they thought that Nissan lost its way. It still has a presence to it. It still draws a crowd. And like I said, your choices are really limited in a certain price bracket to get a two-seat convertible sports car. I do like the way they went to the blacked out housings. Really gives it an aggressive look, especially on this car because it is black. I do like the way they have LED um, marker lights here. The problem is, is that there's something going on in the front here where it's a little bulbous. And I think that's where a lot of you are saying that that's where you feel like they need to get a little bit more aggressive. I'm sure you've seen my video of the 370Z Nismo. If you haven't, check that out because you'll see how a Nismo is gonna be different styling wise and definitely bring in more of that aggressive feel. Front end, one place I think where they really could have done this car some justice was added a lower lip spoiler here. It would have added in the aggressive look and also make it functional as well. Aerodynamics wise, this car is really down pat. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side here. This car being black, I do like these gun metal gray wheels. Very, very neat design. I like the way that um, the design really doesn't hinder you seeing the caliper and the rotor and all that good stuff. So very, very nicely done with the wheels and how it really just blends in with the rest of the car. Um, you know, there are uh, lower scale models, versions of the car where you could get a different style wheel at a cheaper price. This one is pretty fully loaded. I do like the way that Nissan stuck with the Z logo on the side. Very nice touch. It's a marker light. Those are things that you don't see a lot of that kind of traditional type of stuff in cars, especially newer ones nowadays. Everything is just so bland. This still has some flair and some style and that connection to the past. Let's continue our way down the side. I know a lot of you are gonna argue with this statement, but I'm gonna say that the 370Z is probably one of the sexiest cars with the top down. Definitely love the flow of it. One of the things that I really, really like when it comes to the actual design of the car is I like this tonneau cover right here. I'm gonna have Tom come in and, and zoom in on this area here. I wish that all convertible cars would have this nice bodywork tonneau cover. It really gives the car a speedster look to it, hides the convertible top, very sleek, very clean, and that's something that I think really helps this car even look more um, sporty, more aggressive than what it already does. And then finally, to wrap it off, 
I think one of my favorite parts of a 370 or 350Z is gonna be this back fender. I like the flared out look to it. When it comes to the back end of the car, it's got that dual exhaust look. Very, very nice style, very clean. And I think that's really with the whole flow of the car from front to back is that it has a very, very clean appearance to it. Talking about the outside's great, let's see what's powering this Nissan 370Z, that 3.7 liter V6. Let's go pop the hood and check it out. All right guys, here we are underneath the hood of this 370Z. That's that tried and true VQ 3.7 liter V6 putting out well over 330 horsepower. If you do want to go with more power, they do have the Nismo option. Now the Nismo Z, you cannot get in a convertible only in the coupe. So this is one of those things like if you were asking me about that convertible sports car, you're gonna have to go this route. But very, very clean underneath the hood. I like the strut tower brace, how it's integrated in very well. I also like how there's not a ton of plastic all over the engine. You have a very nice, attractive looking engine cover, but it's not overly done. And it just has a nice balance and feel to the engine compartment. Engine's great, it's gonna give you that power, it's gonna give you that quick zero to 60. You're looking at around zero to 60 in a low, five, 4.7 second around there. So basically from 4.7 to about five second, zero to 60, depending on transmission and all that. And that's what we're gonna check out now. Let's go ahead and take a look inside this 370Z. All right guys, I'm inside this 2019 Nissan 370Z convertible. Check out the door panels. You can see that this has that extra touch to it, the Alcantara material on the door panels. I know some of you are saying, well, Hey Joe, I got a 2011 uh, Nissan 370Z. It looks exactly the same. You're right, but that is what we're dealing with right now. Um, you know, like I said, you have other options, but I don't think you're gonna like going with a Miata over this car or a Fiat Abarth 124 Spider. Um, this car ha still has that power, that presence. I do like the seats. I like the way they went with the leather and the cloth material. Now. I personally would prefer maybe Alcantara at this price point because remember, MSRP at the end of the day, you're looking at $48,000 for this convertible. Um, but I, it is a grippy material and it does look good. This also has full power seats. So unlike some of the other uh, 370Zs that I reviewed, this one has full power seats instead of manual seats. I do like the layout of the navigation. I, Really, really like this knob here to help you go through the different functions. The biggest complaint for me is not so much that this is an automatic, which even though I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of manuals, is that they really cheaped out and went with this hard plastic. Tom and I were talking about this. If they would have used a leather shift boot instead of this plastic material, I think the high scale feeling would, would really be there, especially the way they got the leather and the Alcantara here. Why would they do this and then leave this big empty you know, cesspool of plastic. Same thing here with these radio controls. There's a lot of hard plastic. It looks very dated. And I think a lot of you would agree if you have an older Nissan 370Z, this is something that, you know, dates back to that period. I know there's gonna be lots of comments. Why don't you just go buy a used one? Guess what? Some people have never had a 370Z. They don't wanna go buy a used one. They want a new one. And Nissan still has that available. One last thing before I have you come around to the driver's side is I do like the gauge post, uh, pods up top. This harks back to that 280Z, 260Z, 240Z with the functional gauges. Very, very nicely done. And I like to see those extra um, pods there that give you that important information. How about let's go ahead and check out where I'm sitting, where you're gonna be sitting if you went and drove this car right behind the wheel. Come check it out. All right, guys, I'm inside the 370Z. Here's the driver end of the business. I do like the steering wheel. It's a nice leather wrap steering wheel, good leather material, nice uh, grips on the uh, 10 and two. Could be just a little bit bigger right here, but other than that, it's a nice size. It isn't a flat bottom, so I know there's been a lot of discussion on some of my other videos that you think that all cars should have a flat bottom steering wheel. This one does not. Because it is an automatic, it does give you the ability to use the paddle shifters. Now, I will tell you this, even though I'm not the biggest fan of an automatic, I do like the paddle shift shifts. I like the size of them, and I also like the material that they use compared to say like a Mustang or a Camaro, and that might be what you're looking at. You know, you might wanna get a uh, muscle car 
convertible and that's what you're looking at, you don't get this kind of material in those cars. This one has a little bit nicer feel to it and I like that. And this is something that you drive around, you see a lot of Mustangs, you see a lot of Camaros. This is something a little bit more unique. One of my biggest things with this car is when you go to adjust the steering wheel, I love the way the whole gauge pod cl uh, cluster moves up and down. Another thing that's important to me is having that tachometer right there. If you're using the paddle shifters, to have that tachometer straight dead in the center. And what's really nice is, is in that little digital opening right there, it's gonna tell you exactly what gear you're in, which is another nice touch. The only thing that I'm a little hung up on is this right here. I would give this a little bit of a zonk. I don't like this fuel gauge. I wish they would have put some other gauges in here. They got a lot of room. It kind of doesn't fit very well with the rest of it. But other than that, the seats are comfortable. They're, they're grippy enough, but not too over bolstered. And I just like the overall feel in it. Finally, you can see some of the uh, extra touches where you have the nice silver sill panel down here, the Z that lights up. You know, it's one of those things, when you buy this car, you're joining a club. It's not just about driving from A to B, you're joining the Z Car Club, a club that goes back for decades. But anyways, if you're ready, I'm ready to wrap this one up. All right, guys, it's been one hell of a day here at Moss Nissan in Newport Ritchie, Florida. Want to give a huge shout out to David Moss and everybody here at Moss Nissan for allowing Radies Rides full access to cars that you want to see. Because guess what? It's real simple. You leave a comment in the comment section, you send me a message, I go out and try to make that happen for you. So the big, I guess, debate over this car is, do you go and get one? Because there are people that are gonna swear up, down, left, right, and diagonal, go get a used one, save yourself the money. And guess what? That's never a wrong thing. But if you've never had a brand new Nissan 370Z convertible, the car is available for you to come and buy and enjoy have that convertible air, open air filling, you're gonna have some power, and you're not gonna have to just settle on a Mazda Miata or a Fiat Arbard Spider. There are other convertibles out there that are two-seater, but I think the price point is gonna go higher and higher. You go into a Corvette, something like that, it, it, it gets to where you're in the 60, $70,000. So with an MSRP of 48,000, get yourself down to a dealership and really allow you to take one of these for a drive and be the ultimate decider on whether you think it's worth it or not. But anyways, I wanna thank you all for watching today. If you have not hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, I promise you, each and every day I have something new for you to view and you will see it's a little bit of variety for everybody. If you have been a subscriber, thank you. I appreciate you being part of this journey, part of this community, part of this team. I love the way people are leaving comments, helping one another out asking questions, answering questions. It's a really great thing and I'm just so proud to be able to create something like that and share it all with you. If you haven't checked out my website, RadiesRides.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all Radies Rides original content all the time. Definitely wanna check those out. I wanna give a huge shout out to Tom Moshner. Guess what? Tom is training for a weightlifting competition at the end of this year, so you definitely wanna leave some comments in there pump them up because he's going to need it working out every single day and also saving time for Rady's Ride. So thank you, Tom, for this amazing help that you give and really bringing the great views that you guys love. And at the end of the day, just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.